Hello beautiful people. I hope this video finds you well. As a travel agent, I document my trip in a video to share with you. Let's take a journey together through the lens of my camera. Whether you are planning a romantic getaway or a family vacation, your dream destination is just a conversation away. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. My information is below in the description. This is the plan for today. I will go through the Medina, Zema Al Fina, Souk, and the upscale area in Marrakesh, which has nightclubs, casinos, and restaurants. The video may go a little longer than I thought, so grab your drinks and enjoy. This is the alley that my Riyadh is located. You see some donkey cart just moving around with the goods. Transportation. No cars is allowed. Only motorcycle, bike and a small donkey uh, because very tiny. This is an old town in Marrakesh, which is I really wanted to stay to have some experience about how local live here, what is their daily life. I was trying to go shortcut, try to take this alley. I'm thinking that Medina is in that direction. But when I came to a point, it's kind of dark place. And then the guy, and he said, no, you cannot go this way, it's close. I'm going to turn left around that direction. And that direction will be the Kutubia Mosque. And the Souk would be very near. And also the Medina. It's about uh, six, seven minutes walk, not really that far. If you're living in an old town and want to enjoy the old town environment, then everything is walking distance 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, cab is available, can go any place easily. One dollar Moroccan dirham is approximately 10 dirham. Two, three dollars. You can take a taxi almost anywhere. Of course, more farther you go, more you pay. The horse carriages offer tourists a unique way to explore Marrakesh and can be found in various parts of the city, especially around the Medina and Zuma El Fana. Now this uh, horse carriage is known in a local caliches. Most likely every city in Morocco, including Marrakesh here, it's uh, hard to cross the street here. Zebra crossing is almost not respected. Otherwise, you need to look around, it's like a Suicidal mission. Uh, lacking of discipline, I guess. You know, I noticed something while I was walking alone in an old town. When I walk, uh, nobody even approached to me or even look at, at me directly. I felt very safe all the time. Fresh orange and pomegranate juice. Oh, that's my favorite drinks. You know, vendor just make in front of you. You see and you feel and you taste the freshness. He asked me if you want to put some sugar in it or ice and I said no. The sugar, you know, you don't want to be, you want to enjoy the real good taste of the fruit, fresh. And ice, I doubt it because ice probably made with 
uh, regular tap water and that could be a stomach problem so no ice uh california california welcome Yusa. welcome in Marrakech. thank you thank next you very time, much next time inshallah inshallah try try it's very good try oh yeah oh yeah it's very good thank you shukran yeah it tastes great sweet you don't need to put any more sugar this is like a circus going on here. The cobra, monkeys, all kind of stuff. We buy the other bags. Not buy, not buy. Not buy, not kill him. Speak Arabic. Oh, tell him, tell him, tell him. Hebrew, tell him Hebrew. If there is any animal that I am scared of, it would be snakes. I am comfortable taking a picture with lions or tigers or other kind of animals, but not with snakes or crocodiles. I have taken some uh, little video of the snakes and you know you give some tips to them because you're taking the picture of course some tourists they don't give them nothing they just take a picture walk away however you know it's a courtesy I try to give him a like a 20 dirham he said no 200 which is means 20 dollars I don't think so 20 dollars for a picture so he agreed with the 20 dirham. That's it. Bargain place. Marrakesh, everything bargain. If you are looking for shopping, fun, food, and bustling crowds, Zama Al Fana and Medina are your place. From money exchange to historic restaurants, riads, hotels, everything can be found in a one location. You can spend a entire day here without getting tired in this area no vehicles are allowed I think I saw a couple of them but those are probably government or police cars the mostly food traffic is prevalent so many things to buy here I mean I usually like some souvenir you know souvenirs serve as a tangible reminders of your travel experiences they can cherish memories of your trip, the places you have visited, and the people you have met. When you travel, you should buy local souvenir just for memory. Yeah. <laughs> Ceramic for tajin. Yeah. The number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> He's, uh, he knows the song title. I know the song of a uh, Bollywood movie, right? Yes. I like uh, Salman Khan. <laughs> you know, the Indian movies, Bollywood movies are popular in many Arab countries. I was surprised uh, when this guy mentioned Bollywood movies uh, name, uh, the titles and the actor's name. I never knew that Moroccans watch Bollywood movies. Wow. What do you call this? The this name is Abaya. Saba? Abaya. Abaya. Oh. This is for man. Jalaba is Abaya. Discount. Abaya and Jalaba. Jalaba is with hood. Oh, Jalaba with the hood. And is, is without hood is Abaya. Abaya. And how about the women? This is for women. This is Kaftan Berber. Barber dress. Yeah. Barber dress. This is Kaftan. Much design mm -hmm. is Kaftan. What is your store name? My name? Your store name. Ah, this is Sukabaja. Uh, Sukabaja? Baja. Hello. What's your name? Eunice. Eunice? Eunice. Lunis? Eunice. Oh, okay, Eunice. And all women, Moroccan. All traditional. This is dress traditional Moroccan. Traditional Moroccan, okay. For men and women and children. Children. For boys, girls. Okay, okay. As you like. Not uh, much, much style for uh, tradition. Okay. Medina, this souk area 
has everything textile clothing spices ceramic jewelry leather goods rocks you name it <laughs> now keep in mind that uh, a store owner or the seller they could give you the price so high because they know you are a tourist sometimes they do the same thing with the um, local moroccan people so what do you do uh, you bargain because bargaining is a common practice in most of the area in any bazaar any medina anywhere you go except the mall and supermarket you're going to bargain there okay people are very friendly in morocco very uh, hospitality i mean you know you can't judge all moroccan people by a couple of guys just hassle you to sell something but the most they don't So this market you this can buy anything. Other style, other style. Beautiful. Most Moroccan people wear a flip-flop. Uh, not so many people wear shoes here. So it is very important for their life because Morocco is a hot weather. It's more comfortable with a flip-flop. Alright. Salam alaikum. Moroccan tea is a famous. They put lots of sugar in it, but you can choose. So if you come to Morocco and you want to buy something about tea, coffee, pot, you come to the souk and you buy anything you want. All the best stuff. Beautiful. I'll show you inside the little bit store and you can see. And I'm going to ask the guy how much cost, okay? This is for the food. Nice. My friend, what's your name? Hafez. Hafez? You're welcome, yes. Hafez. It's easy, Hafez. Hafez? Yes. Hafez. You're Moroccan? Yeah. 100%? 100%. 100%. This is for what? This one? For everything. That one. Food, for bread. Yeah, bread. Everything. How much costs one of this? Like that one, 320, small price. 320 yeah. dirham. Dirham. So means. In, uh, dollar. 32 dollars yeah. okay what is this this one this one for marriage Moroccan marriage, marriage. Yeah. oh for marriage for moroccan yeah. and what what you put it in here sugar okay tea tea and men moroccan wedding is a very fancy wedding this wedding can be go few days and how much cost like this like this one this is one pieces Yes, okay, so 1,000, 2,000, which is 200, 200 dollars. Moroccan culture is a very hospitality. Uh, Moroccan people are happy and the best. Yeah. It's old country. What country? It's old country. Old? Yeah. Yeah, Morocco has a lot of history, of course. Thousands of years. As you know, Morocco used to rule Spain for a long time ago. Andalusia, yeah. This is Zema El Fana, is a famous public square. It is known for its bustling atmosphere, street performers, food stalls, and open air market. And Zema El Fana is situated within the Medina. Some money change. Two days ago I changed hundred dollars and almost finished. And tomorrow maybe I'm going to a trip so I need some cash. So price is pretty good here. USD is uh, they're buying it for 254 dirham and selling it for 10.94 which is not bad. The airport was pretty low almost 1.20 dirham was less. So if you change more money you get less.
بساحات جمعتنا ويلكم ثم راكيش ويلكم انجليش مرحبا مرحبا بساحات جمعتنا What is the name? This is Marco. Marco? Macaco. Good job. Macaco. Macaco? Macaco. Oh, not Marco. Macaco. Macaco. Okay, this is Macaco. You see here? In Medina. Maracay. It's a chaos place. This monkey is cool. Busy eating. Hello. In some part of Morocco, monkey and snakes, uh, wild animal are used for entertainment. In the Marrakesh Medina, uh, street performers and vendors with monkeys and snakes may approach to the tourists for a take a picture and you just pay them some money. It is important to consider animal welfare when interacting with animals in Marrakesh or anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Marrakesh can be fun place. Chaos, bargain, hassle, everything is here. Okay, this is like a goal of fishing. Uh, within a time frame, you can attempt to hook the bottle and that could be yours. In Marrakesh and other major Moroccan city, a tourist may encounter scams. Uh, most it is happening around, you know, like a tourist area. But I'm saying that it's not only in Morocco, it could be happening anywhere. It could be happening in Paris, Rome, be happening in Los Angeles. So when you're traveling as a tourist, you know, places are unknown. You do not know the cultures, you do not know the area. Just be careful. So here is a sum scam. They start with number one, unofficial tour guide. They might offer you anywhere and say, hey, I'm a tour guide. I'm going to show you this place. Let's go and uh, offer you very cheap price. Uh, don't do it because first of all, they don't have a license and they're probably not a tour guide. Who knows? They could take you somewhere else. The scam number two. Price inflation. Price inflation is that example, you are in the souk and you want to buy a rug. The rug, let's say, the originally cost, let's say, $300, but they're going to charge you $2,000. And you're thinking that is the right price. So you need to know how to bargain. The scam number three, free offers. Free offers is like you are walking through a bazaar or souk and the store owner very nice to you invite you inside the store, offer you some coffee, uh, maybe tea, and then they're gonna be friendly with you and ask you, no, 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 you don't have to buy anything. I just like to talk to you. And then they're gonna ask you all kind of questions and everything. Finally, they're gonna say, oh, you know what? I want to sell this to you. And then you're gonna feel bad if you don't buy because you just drunk their tea or the fruit juice, right? So don't do that. Scam number four, fake goods. Don't buy it. There's a lots of fake goods in a brand name. Scam number five, taxi scam. Oh my God, this is always I get angry. Taxi scam in all over in Morocco. It's not only in Marrakesh. They'll tell you the meter is not working. If they know you're a foreigner, they'll charge you like five times higher. And if you do not have 
exact change for the taxi. So let's say the taxi cost 50 dirham and you have 200 dirham note and you hand over him 200 dirham, he will tell you, I don't have a change. So what are you going to do to make sure you have a change for the taxi? Number six, destruction theft. Destruction theft can be happen anywhere, mostly any places. They'll destruct you and try to take your uh, backpack or your wallet, you know, something like that. Now, scam number seven, misdirection and demand for money. What is misdirection and demand for money? This means you are walking and you do not know how to get point A to point B. You ask a nice young man and say, hey, uh, can you tell me how can I go to this place? And the guy goes, oh, you going there? I'm going there too. Let's go. We walk together. So while they're walking with you, asking you where you're from, how long you're going to be staying in Marrakesh, blah, blah, blah. And then once they get to the point A to point B, he will demand you money. So careful with those things. No respect in a zebra crossing. They're gonna keep going over you. Look at this guy. He's trying to cross in the traffic flow. You see that? I cannot do that, man. This guy just boom. In this area, many undercover police officers. As you see, one of the cops apprehended this woman. They tried to rob the tourists or snatch bags, snatch the telephone, and they catch them. They maybe also try to sell drugs or anything like that, which is good, very good. This area is it known as Hivernage. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly. This part of Marrakesh is kind of rich area. This also has a nightlife. Even it is a Muslim country, uh, has a Sharia law, but still they are pretty much ignored almost. And you can have a here casino, nightclubs, bar, everything in here. So I'm going to go inside the casino and see what kind. <laughs> I went inside the casino. Uh, it's a pretty small, it's not really that big. A few couple of restaurants there. They didn't let me bring my cap like this. I had to remove my cap to going inside. As long as I remain inside the casino, I cannot put my cap on. I'm kind of hungry, but in this area, I do not know where to go to some uh, Take it easy restaurant because all those restaurants that I seen there is really full. We ended up in a restaurant. <laughs> it's so funny. You know, it has happened to many tourists. It's very strange. It was even doesn't look like a Japanese restaurant. I ordered some uh, Japanese yakisoba noodle with a beef. It's a very, very expensive here. It's 200 dirham start weight and it could be go six, seven hundred dirham. But you know what? I really didn't want it to come Japanese restaurant to eat Japanese food in Morocco. This one was quiet, not so much people. Look. But ended up in a Japanese restaurant. But you know what? I like Japanese food. But I was not ready for Japanese for tonight. However, when you're hungry, just eat it, you know? I just moved from outside to inside because I didn't know outside everybody was smoking in the restaurant. Japanese udon is here. Let's see how is the taste. A little salty. 
I feel like I'm complaining, right? I used to live in Japan. I lived there for almost 40 years. I know how the Japanese udon is supposed to be. I'm used to be eating Japanese udon all the time, but not supposed to be that uh, salty, but it's okay. I think he put too much uh, soy sauce. It's like they're talking about a beef in the menu, but where is my beef, right? I found one piece of beef. Should give a new name. Japanese sodium noodles. So much salt. But I'm eating. You know what? I'm so hungry. And this restaurant nobody speaks English. Any country I go, I usually eat the local food, local recipe. Then maybe ended up in McDonald's or Burger King, something like that. But that is not my choice. I like the hashi. Very good quality hashi. I cannot eat anymore. Leave it there. Salty, salty, salty. If you enjoy watching this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Your support will help me produce more travel videos for you. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification.